This is Lemmy with RevZilla TV. I'm here in the San Gabriel Mountains of California testing out the 2016 BMW S1000XR. This truly promises race bike power in a very streetable package that's going to leave you comfortable on a long ride. We're going to hash this baby out the way we do all RevZilla bikes. How it gets up to speed, how it slows down, and how it gets through the corners. Because the BMW S1000XR has such an advanced rider electronics package, we're also going to have a special portion of the video dedicated to talking about how some of these electronic gadgets make your life a little bit better. And you guys know it wouldn't be a RevZilla review if we weren't going to talk about how we were going to change this motorcycle. We'll have a modification section to talk about ways we can make the XR just a little bit better. First though, we need to spend some seat time in this. Hang on, this baby is fast. BMW's website, you'll notice that they categorize the S1000XR as an adventure bike. I'm not sure that I agree with it. Sure, it's got the small fly screen and the beak up front we're accustomed to seeing on ADV bikes, but there's a couple clues that tip this off as being a street-oriented motorcycle. Check out, for instance, those 17-inch wheels and tires. Those give the tip off that this is a machine meant for the street. Keep in mind, too, there's also that rider electronics package. Those are designed to turn an average rider into a really great rider who's spending most of their life on the pavement. Nope, this is not an ADV bike. This is a do-all bike, a Swiss Army knife. Now, if you're checking out an S1000XR for purchase, odds are very good that you're familiar with the Ducati Multistrada. The big differentiator for most customers, I think, is gonna be the power plant. The S1000XR uses an inline four-cylinder, and the Ducati has an L-twin. Now, there's always a few folks who are balling on a budget, too. If you're one of those, you probably are looking at the Aprilia Capinord as well. Sure, it's a few thousand dollars cheaper, but it also gives up an awful lot of horsepower. It's also no secret too that Aprilia's dealer network is not quite as robust as the dealer networks of either Ducati or BMW. So I'm going to take this bike out, but I need to be thoroughly impressed. I'm not going to mince words. This is a premium priced motorcycle, so it really better deliver the goods. From those huge Brembo brakes up front to this giant 160 horsepower brute of a motor, I have no doubt this is going to hustle down the road and scrub off speed just as fast. And again, I'm going to take those 17 inch wheels and tires and put them over in a curve, best I can. It's time now to start abusing this very handsome motorcycle. first got on the BMW S1000XR, the star of the show was the engine. This is a bare-chested brawler of a motor. Pack of 12 to 1 compression, it's down one point from the S1000RR's 13 to 1 compression, but in no way let that fool you. This is not a slow motorcycle at all. This is the perfect excuse for a leader bike for the street. The reason being, this thing has power all over the place. So if you're a lazy shifter like I can sometimes be, or even if you just select the wrong gear coming out of the corner, it's not really a problem. The S1000XR has all the power you need to deal with such a situation. And this really is one of the fastest motorcycles I've ever ridden. Coming up this mountain road, I hit a long straight stretch, and boy, I got on this thing. The front wheel came up in first, second, and third gears. I haven't ridden many, if any, bikes that would actually do something like that. So the next thing I want to chat about too is the brakes. The brakes on here, take a peek at these babies. You've got an axial mount master cylinder, but you've also got radial mount Brembo brakes up front feels amazing. They do a great job scrubbing the bike down to a stop. The thing that I really like, I think, about them, though, is that you get one or two finger braking. Now, take a moment to think about that. Normally, one or two finger braking, not that big a deal. You can get that on a lot of bikes. But can you get it on bikes packing as much power as this? Nope. It shows that BMW did their homework and they were thinking about the final product. They made sure that they're giving a brake that is totally suitable for a bike with this much power. Now let's talk about chassis and suspension. With respect to the chassis, this is a little different than the S1000R or RR. This thing has more rake, more trail, more wheelbase, and more weight, more of everything. 
And a part of what that chassis does for you gives you this nice upright riding position you can see that I have. I'm so comfortable in this bike. I could click off hundreds of miles in this without a second thought. The other thing I like about the chassis though is even though it's a little more relaxed, I don't feel like I've given up performance. I'm not fighting the chassis coming through corners and I'm definitely not having to feel like I gave up performance simply because I'm a little bit more comfortable. This bike's chassis is definitely a little bit more capable than I am as a rider. So the other thing I want to draw your attention to is the suspension. This bike is fitted with optional electronic suspension you can see up here on the fork tube. Boy, I'll tell you what, it is fantastic. It almost feels telepathic. And I know that sounds silly, but the, the suspension responds so quickly to undulations in the road or to things that I'm doing that my brain actually transposes the events and it feels like they're happening before I even know it. It makes the bike unbelievably confidence inspiring. Now this particular piece of electronic equipment is not the only one on the bike. Let's talk about some other electronics that make riding the S1000XR an absolute joy. what makes the S1000XR an outstanding bike is the electronic suite that's provided with this. All of the electronic systems on this bike work harmoniously and they're controlled by rider modes. Let's talk about some of the systems that rider modes are integrating right now. Starting off with the brakes. This bike is equipped with ABS. Now that's derogar on a lot of bikes these days, but the ABS on this bike works exceptionally well because it also monitors the wheel speed relative to one another. Speaking of stability control, you've also got ASC and DTC on this bike. ASC, automatic stability control, monitors wheel spin. So if you hit anything like say a slick spot in the road or perhaps you hit some uneven terrain, once the system feels that the rear wheel is spinning, it starts gradually decreasing power until that wheel hooks back up again. DTC takes that a little bit further, dynamic traction control. It does the exact same thing, but it also takes into account your bank angle. So if you're in the midst of a turn, it's not going to upset you while you're coming through and finishing up your curve. Moving on from there, I really like the DESA, Dynamic Electronic Suspension Adjustment. I liked it for two reasons. First, toolless suspension adjustment. That's really cool. Secondly, the system is monitoring electronically the up and down movement of your suspension and it's adjusting the entire time. It works out really, really well. I love Gear Shift Assistant Pro too. A lot of you are probably familiar with an item like a quick shifter that allows you to do clutchless upshift. Gear Shift Assistant Pro lets you do clutchless downshift as well. The system is fantastic at rev matching and I really enjoyed using it. It was a ball. The final thing I think everyone expects too is a little bit of throttle taming. If you did something like select the rain mode on this motorcycle, the throttle is softened just a little bit around the edges. Now that sounds like it might be sort of a nanny stepping in to help you, but it actually works really well, especially when you consider all the power on tap with a 160 horse bike like the S1000XR. Now I could stand here all day and tell you about this stuff, but we should get out on the road so I can show you a few of these electronic systems in action. Let's chat about some of those electronics. And as I had mentioned, everything really is controlled with the rider mode button. You can see here, I flick my mode button and it changes my mode very quickly. It's sort of the overarching way to control all of the electronics quickly. Right now I'm in rain mode and that was controlling ABS earlier. I was thinking about that as I was rolling around because ABS was kicking in very, very easily. I could lock up the wheel very simply because the computer assumed that I needed the extra help. But with a simple stab of the button, just like this, you can see on my board, I flip right into road mode. It's that easy. The other thing that's cool too is that traction control. Traction control works out really well here. Did you see that little bunny hop I just took there? That bunny hop happened specifically because the computer set me back down. DTC, ASC, the, the electronic file, they're all combined to keep me from getting in too much trouble. So one of the other things I really like too about this motorcycle was the suspension adjustment. So we already talked about how the electronic suspension monitors up and down movement of the suspension. But one of the other things I thought was cool too is you can also do on the fly adjustments of how the bike is actually damping. So if I hit this suspension button, you can see my bars right here. You'll see I'm in road mode now. I flick it over to dynamic. And as of right now, I'm ready to do some sporty riding. So you can switch from a nice lazy touring mode to just giving that a quick flick. And now I have a much firmer suspension that's very suitable for the sporty type of riding that this type of environment demands. Now another favorite of mine was the Gear Shift Assist Pro. This thing is so much fun. Watch as I downshift. You'll notice that I'm not bucking or jerking at all. See how smooth those are? I'm in second gear, third, fourth, 
fifth, I come right up. And unfortunately, this is a better shifting system than I can even shift myself. I feel bad saying that, but really the electronics are better than I am. It really is fun to ride a bike this capable. It's kind of a gee whiz sort of an experience. So now we're getting to the time of things when we're gonna talk about modifications. Now BMW has given you overall a very competent package. Normally in these modification sections, I'm looking for things on the bike I can improve, places where they might have cut some corners. I don't think BMW cut too many corners, so most of my modifications are actually going to be augmentations. Things you're going to want to add on to the BMW S1000XR. Let's go talk about some of those modifications right now. So some of you are going to say I've gone a little bit soft because I don't have my usual litany of modifications to pick up where BMW left off. But the truth is, this is a damn good bike. I'll shoot you straight. Still though, there are a couple changes I would make. Let's start with these handguards. These are an optional BMW accessory that were installed. Do I love them? Not really. I wouldn't take them off, but I don't think I would spend my coin on them immediately. Instead, I think I'd start with the luggage situation. You can see this bike is equipped with pannier racks as well as a top case rack, but there's no luggage. I'm sure the aftermarket's gonna have plenty of affordable, sturdily built options. Next, I'd direct my attention and my efforts up to the front end of the bike. Check out the lighting situation on the XR. It's not bad, but it could be better. I think I would add in a set of Denali D4 hybrid lights. The hybrid lights are cool because they offer two beam styles. One is a narrow beam that focuses light way down the road, but the other is more of a flood pattern that's gonna illuminate the sides of the road. That's gonna be helpful for those of you who ride a lot at night like I do in deer country. It'll help you avoid our furry four-legged friends. The final modification I would make, do me a favor and look at the radiator and oil cooler down there. Boy, are they large, and they sit right behind the front tire. For those of you who might offer with the big XR, it's just one pebble away from puking its fluid all over the place. Happily, RNG Racing makes a rad guard that should bolt in and should be a pretty easy install for most folks. Now, it wasn't all just a BMW gush fest. I had some other issues too with the way they optioned this bike out and some of the pricing, but that really lends itself better to a print format. Head on over to Common Trade and you can read our in-depth analysis of life with the S1000XR. As always, I would ask that you subscribe to us on YouTube. Make sure the ZLA video team isn't standing on the cheese line. Me, I got some more work to do on those mountains with this motorcycle. I'm Lemmy, I'm out of here.